Hello, uh, this is uh, another devotion. It's day 14, which will be in our 14th week of going through the book Stepping Forward, written by Pastor Mike Lingenfelter. It's a 39-day book of getting through Ephesians, and today is talking about the ministry. It's Ephesians 3, 7 through 13, and I'll begin by reading that message. Of which I was made a minister, according to the gift of God's grace, which was given to me, according to the working of his power. To me, the very least of all saints, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unfathomable riches of Christ and to bring to light what the administration of the mystery, which for ages has been hidden in God, who created all things. So that the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known through the church to the rulers and the authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose for which he carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord. In whom we have boldness and confident access through faith in him. Therefore I ask you not to lose heart at my tribulations on your behalf for they are your glory. So this was written by Paul, and he was called to the ministry, as you know. In Paul's ministry to serve God, uh, he just felt like he wasn't um, empowered, I guess, right? or didn't, he didn't have the power, and he didn't, none of us do, unless Christ is involved and God is involved in giving us the strength to do so. And his ministry had primarily two functions. First, he was to preach the unfathomable riches of Christ and how rich we are to have the Lord Christ as our Savior. The blessings, the uh, forgiveness of sin, all that, none of that we deserve. And all that is by grace. And I know you've heard the acronym many times. Grace is God, riches at Christ's expense. And that's what it is. And that's what it, it all is. And this is what Paul's talking about here. None of us deserve grace. And many of us have a hard time accepting grace. But if we accept Christ as our Savior, we should accept that grace and understand that God wants us to have this grace. The second function in his ministry was to bring to light the mystery to everyone. We're so fortunate. We have the book. We have the Bible that has everything in it. So when we have questions, we can go to that. As we talk to people, we can help them through that with those with the answers of the book from Christ. So as we look at that, um, Paul didn't have all these things, so he had to rely totally on God, which we all really need to do. If we try to go out and do things on our own, we're going to mess it up so bad that even Pastor Mike can't fix it, <laughs> if you know what I mean. So we got to rely on God, and we got to be bold in his name. And that's what we're talking about here. The purpose and end goal of, of, of Paul's ministry was to reveal the diverse wisdom of God to everyone. And, and at that time, and even now, so many people don't know God, and they think they know God. They, you, you talk to people and they say, oh yeah, there's 80% or whatever the number is, people believe there is a God, but not many know God. And that's our responsibility to move forward and do that. And be, in getting to that, the plan of salvation is the reason we're here. We're here because of salvation, because of Christ. And it's our job to, I guess, report it, but spread that word out there. So I've got a question to you and to me. Uh, when was the last time you told anybody about God's grace and about salvation? I know probably all of us are weak in that. Some of you I know aren't. I know many of you that are, go out and you just don't have a problem uh, talking to people and bringing up salvation and all that. But, but that to me is a hard time. I'm very fortunate uh, to assist or help in some other ministries that have very good things that make it easier where you can just offer somebody a free gift of, gift of a New Testament and it opens up the conversation. And if the conversation goes positive, you can go to it and start talking to them about salvation. But just plant the seed. We're not always going to be able to be there to see someone come to know the Lord. 
but maybe if some little thing you say or do plants that seed and then someone else comes along and they water that seed and then someone else comes along and maybe harvests that uh, as the people go on and they listen to that and that's the, that's our commission and that's what we're supposed to do so the challenge we have here is is to share that and i got some notes here maybe it'll help me maybe it won't so the challenge is this to myself too will you make a commitment this week to share the good news of, of the lord share salvation to someone whether it's a family member, or whether it's just a friend, or how many times, this isn't the case of me, somebody will just cross your path, you don't even know them, but you'll walk by and, uh, you know, like God will be speaking and say, you need to talk to them, say hi to them, just do whatever. Maybe you'll be in a restaurant and you have a waitress or a waiter waiting on you and you got a few minutes, you don't want to interrupt their job, just ask them, is there anything I can pray for you today? You'd be surprised at how many times that opens up a dialogue. You don't have to go through the whole plan of salvation unless there's time and it won't get them in trouble and, you know, you know, impact their job. But you've planted that seed, and you can talk to them later if they want to come back. So just be bold enough to know that the Lord is going to supply you. You're not doing this on your own. If you're being felt moved that you need to talk to somebody, that's the Holy Spirit and the Lord is, is pushing you to do that. And so you need to step forward and do that. So that's our challenge for the week. So I know I probably missed this up pretty bad, but that's, that's the challenge we have this week. And that's what Paul did. And think of what Paul went through. Talk about somebody that had some burdens to go through, imprisonment and torture, whatever else he went through. Uh, especially here in the United States, we're probably not going through things like that. So we don't have that excuse. We just need to be bold enough to understand and know that the Lord will give us the words to use and the right thing to do. And if we do something that we don't think is right, that still may be what that person needed to know and hear, that you do not have to be perfect to come to know the Lord. So thank you. I hope uh, everything goes well for you this week. And let's just have a quick word in prayer. Father God in heaven, as we go forward in this week, Lord, please help us to be bold. Help us to understand and know that when you're speaking to us, to reach out and talk to someone, that we have that boldness and we know that you will give us the right words to say. We thank you. As always, we give you the glory in all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.